Hey guys, I'm so excited. Today is our treasure trove day. So um, many months ago, we posted a picture. We received 14 boxes uh, from a company that uh, we're very good friends with that was closing down. It was a warehouse closure. Um, and they were housing their goods in a warehouse with a lot of different kinds of items. And so they didn't have intimate access with the items or how they were being cared for. Um, so we were a little shocked when we opened them up. Um, and I'm actually going to take you on a little field trip to go take a look. Um, <clears throat> we'll take this with us so I can keep on track. But um, at any rate, we opened up these 14 mystery boxes. We had no idea what was inside. And uh, it was awfully exciting, to say the least, but everything was covered in like a thick layer of dust and dirt. And um, so it did take us some time to kind of process through everything. I'm walking into actually our gallery office. Um, so there's a, you know, Rosa's desk over here. Rosa's in the gallery today. Um, but at any rate, we opened up these boxes and there's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. There's, you know, books and tools and just all sorts of odd things. Um, and then we found a huge stash of beads of all sorts of different kinds of check beads. And I've kind of shown you guys these things. Um, before as we've been processing them, but I wanted to give you an idea of what it looked like. This is what it looked like when we got it. They were all just sort of bagged, and a lot of the bags were actually pretty dirty. These are some of the cleaner ones. Um, so we really have spent some time cleaning these up and making them extra special. And one of the latest things that we got accomplished is there's a bunch of hanks of seed beads, something we've never sold in all the years I've worked for Softlex. Um, we really don't know a whole lot about seed beads, um, but we're doing a promotion right now on the website, www.softlexcompany.com, where if you buy a trio, we're going to pick an entire hank of seed beads that is in a complementary color to go with that trio. So this is a renewal trio and you probably would get some sort of green. Here's a great trick or treat trio, um, perfect for the season. You might get something like this where it's more of an orangey or a yellowy color. Of course, Serenity is one of uh, the best selling trios that we have because um, it's just such a pretty color combination. You might get something like this, like a nice gold. Um, it'll be chosen, you know, based on the colors that you choose. We'll choose the beads for you. Um, so, like I said, it's going to be an entire hank of seed beads. So, not just one strand, not just two strands, a bunch of strands. Um, so, I think it's just such a great deal. I wanted to make sure that I point it out to you. Um, but we have all sorts of cool stuff that we have unearthed from this huge shipment that we received. And so um, I had taken my time to go through some of it, and I created what we're calling our treasure trope kits. And that's what some of you out there have right now. It is an assortment of items from the shipment that we received, and then a few items that are from our regular normal stock at Softwax. So we're using this one, which we're calling the September uh, Treasure Trove Kit today. I've made a set of jewelry that I'm gonna show you how to make. I used only items that are in this package. So if there is a beater out there that doesn't have other items to mix in, um, I made sure I only used things that are in here to make it easy for you. Um, but you can by all means mix in your own items as well. Um, if you do have added items and you're making your own design or you can make what I make today, it's totally up to you. I had a ton of beads left over um, from what I made. So there's definitely, you could definitely make quite a bit more than what I'm gonna even show you today. So there's only a few in this color left 
um, right now, and those are available on our website at www.softlixcompany.com. If you want to just stay here and claim one, you can go ahead and comment sold and uh, September, and then I'll know that you want a blue kit, and you know we can do it in chronological order if anybody, um, if there's too many people claiming them, you know, then and we run out of supplies, I'll let you know. Um, but I'm also opening up um, October's today <clears throat> for sale and October is purple and copper so it's got a uh, crystal in it and then it's got you know our purple wire some copper findings and then it has a bunch of purple beads um, from our wonderful treasure trove of items that we received um, but it was just been so neat like I said just kind of picking through this stuff and seeing like the different items that are in here that, you know, we normally just would never carry or have. Um, so I'm hopeful I can do a few more um, in the coming weeks here. And if you do, Mark, I see Shelly just bought a September and an October. I'll just contact you after the live show and we'll take care of all the payment details at that point. Um, so don't worry too much about that part. Um, and yeah, so let's get started. Let's head on over, um, back to my messy office. My, I got to pick my paint color guys. So, um, that was pretty exciting me and it won't be too long until <laughs> we get it painted and then I'll finally get to unpack and actually feel a little bit at home here, um, in, in the new office. So I'm pretty excited for that moment of feeling like I'm totally and utterly at home <laughs> and relaxed, but still working on it. So, okay, so here we go. We're done with our field trip and we are back at my beading table. So here is what I made with my treasure trove kit. Um, I don't know if you can post pictures on a live video because I've never tried it before. If you can't, you're welcome to post pictures of anything that you made that's different after the video um, publishes. If you can post them, by all means, I would love to see if you've made something um, already with your treasure trove kit, I would love to see what you're making. Um, but in the meantime, I'm gonna show you guys how to make all three of these designs. Um, everything, like I said, came out of a treasure trove kit. Um, except for the tools. I didn't add anything uh, special or different um, than what you'll get if you have one um, yourself. And again, if you want to buy one, um, sold September or sold October in the comments and I'll get you taken care of after the live show. Okay, so where do we even start? Oh my God. Okay, so <laughs> I think we'll start with the bracelet. Let me just move these guys aside. I, when I saw these guys um, in the the mixture of items, um, th this was my initial inspiration for these kits. I was like, oh my gosh, I love these. Um, I don't know if they're plated. I don't know what kind of metal they are. We didn't get any information about the materials um, that came in those boxes. And that's a big reason why we're not putting any of them online to be sold as single items. Um, and we're just doing things like fun kits and giveaways and stuff with them. Um, but <clears throat> I love these. I think these are just such a neat component and something that you could do lots of different things with. So I'm excited to show you this project for sure today. Um, but let's start with the bracelet. That's what I started with at home. And I'm just gonna unpack my treasure trove kit here. So you guys that don't have one can kind of see what's inside one of these guys. I'm gonna move this back a little bit. So it comes with 50 of our gold filled two by two millimeter crimp tubes a 10 foot spool of our soft flex in one of my favorite colors, tanzanite. Um, those really awesome gold colored earrings. There were these really cool little heart buttons that I thought were neat. So there's a bunch of heart buttons. And then there's a couple different clasps. There's three clasps. One's a magnetic clasp, 
And I think that's gold filled. I can't say for sure, but I think it is. And then these guys are gold plated toggles. Um, so I found those all in the stash that we got from this, um, the company that closed down. And then there's a bunch of different beads. So we've got these guys, which are really lovely with the tanzanite color. And these guys, which I ended up using in the necklace. Kind of little melons. And um, there's a couple of strands of bugle beads. And then I think just one strand of these larger blue seed beads. Another tanzanite colored shaped bead. Hey Sylvia, thanks for joining us for the first time. You're more than welcome to join us. We're happy to see you. So, and what we're doing is we're opening a treasure trove kit from softlexcompany.com. And um, <clears throat> there's a limited supply of them. There's only a few of this particular one left. But a bunch of people have purchased them already. And so those who have one already are going to be able to make something with me today or post pictures of what they've made um, since they've gotten their kit. Okay, so I am going to start out making the bracelet, and in the bracelet, I used one of these toggle clasps from in here, and I'll just set those aside. I used the heart buttons here, and I need some crimps, some wire, and then I used some of um, these dark blue pressed glass beads. We think these are check beads. We think the seed beads are check beads, but we don't know for sure. Nothing's labeled. And so um, that's been kind of one of the difficulties of it is not knowing exactly what it is that we have, even though we kind of think we do. Um, we, we're always really careful about how we label things. So they look very much like a check glass bead. It's pretty dark blue but we don't know for certain there. You can see the blue a little better with the light behind it. Okay, so for this bracelet, um, what I did was I used two strands of tanzanite. So I'm gonna open up my wire, and I don't need a whole lot more than what this bracelet strand is, so I'm not gonna cut off too much wire. And in fact, I'll even measure, let me see if I have my measuring tape here, measure for those of you who like a little more precision. We'll use our fusion beads measuring tape. <clears throat> I am gonna cut off about, uh, it's about eight inches. Um, you'll have to adjust this obviously for your wrist. Um, from the very tip of that toggle to the toggle bar, this is seven and a half inches, which fits very nicely on my six inch wrist. It fits me pretty well. It's a, maybe a little tiny bit loose. Okay, so I am going to trim my wire using my cutters, and then I'm gonna pull out a second piece the same length. I love this tanzanite colored wire. It's definitely one of my favorites. You can go either way with blues or purples. It looks really pretty um, with both, um, but it's just a nice um, alternative to this dark blue. It's pretty good together. Okay, so I'm gonna take both wires and now, and let me open up my crimps too. I'm gonna grab a little dish here so that they don't go flying all over. So there's 50 of these gold filled crimps in here, so there's more than enough to do lots of different projects, even projects with multiple, multiple um, crimps being used. This bracelet that we're doing only uses two crimps, one on each side. So I'm still gonna have 48 crimps left. Okay, so 
I am going to take both wires and just sort of bring them together so that the two ends meet. I'm going to string my crimp tube. These are Softlex crimp tubes, so they are thicker and stronger than many on the market. They're double the wall thickness of most, so you can even kind of see it. Um, when you're looking at an inexpensive crimp, they're very, very thin walled, and that wall just breaks down real easily. Um, so it's very, very important to have a good quality crimp tube because it's really holding everything together. So now I'm going to take one of these wires and I'm going to string it through the clasp. And then I'll just back that wire into the crimp tube. And I can even pull this other one down a little bit further. I don't need that much wire um, at the end. And I am going to adjust so that I get my loop a little bit closer to my finding. And what I'm going to do, the, the wire, the 019 Softlux beading wire only fits through this 2 by 2 millimeter crimp tube uh, three times. And that's why I'm going to crimp and then I'm going to trim wire off on both sides of the crimp tube. And that's going to give me a nice connection on this side, but two wires that I can work with on the other side. So using my magical crimpers, if you're new, these are the most fantastic crimping pliers. They have identical divots on each side and the two by two millimeter crimp tube fits in it just perfectly. So I'm going to slide that crimp tube right into the center of the pliers. So you can't really even see the tube on either side because it's right in the middle and I'm going to compress. And if you've done it correctly, you should get a little ravioli. It's going to pinch like four little corners in that crimp tube, um, pinching the edge of the crimp tube into the nylon coating of the wire. I'm going to flip it on its side and repeat. This time I'm pushing those four little corners from the square into the um, nylon coating. And then I just continue to just spin and go around it tightening it all down and when I'm done I'm going to have what looks like a little bead but it's also very strong connection. You can purchase the tool from softlexcompany.com and we don't have a lot in stock so I do highly suggest if you want a crimping plier you buy one soon um, because I, last time I looked there weren't many were I'm supposed to be ordering more, but I don't know when those will come in. Okay, so, but there are some right now at softlexcompany.com. One of my coworkers can probably link it for you to make it easy. Okay, so I'm going to trim off the wire using my cutters right at the crimp tube, and I'm going to trim on both sides, get rid of those little wires, and then I have two wires to work from here. Um, and so that's going to make it real easy. One thing I like to do um, to make my life easier <laughs> is I like to use these mini macrame boards. Do you guys have one of these at home? If you don't, you don't have to have one. It just makes things easier. I'm going to slide my clasp in here and that way it just holds it in place and I can start adding my beads and my buttons. Um, and I'm just going to kind of move this stuff to the side here so that you guys can see what I'm doing, um, but I can still access these beads here. There we go. Okay, so on this bracelet, what I did, I just threw my clasp, of course, there we go. Um, what I did was I took both wires and strung one of the dark blue beads And then I separated the wires and added a button by stringing one wire through one side of the button and the other wire through the opposite side of the button and then just pulled it up to the blue bead here. 
And then I'm going to bring both wires back together again and string a blue bead. This is a great way to use any buttons that you have um, on hand. If you have like a special button that you would really like to incorporate into some jewelry, this is a really nice way um, to have it face out and have it be part of the design um, and really get seen. So I'm going to do the same thing throughout this bracelet. I'm just going to take my wire in one side and then the opposite side and then pull that heart up to the bead and add another and just keep going. I think you guys have kind of the gist. I'll take it off so you can see it up close on the back side a little better. So basically what you would call this usually is a ladder stitch. Um, it just goes in one side and then in the other side and it just stitches it all together. Um, so that's a really easy way to use some buttons. And so after I went through the whole thing, all I did on the other end was the same thing I did on the front end. I took both wires through the crimp, but only one wire through the second half of the clasp and back into the crimp, and then I crimped it down. Um, so if you guys have any questions about this project, go ahead and place it in the comment. Um, and if I don't catch your questions during the live show, I will definitely try to answer them after um, as we move forward uh, with, with projects here. So I just thought this was super cute, a nice way to use up these cute little hearts um, that were in the treasure trove kit. They all face out, which, you know, is really nice with a button to get them to face out like that. Um, and I love how they're nice and bright and gold. So I'm going to click this off of here and we're going to move on to the earrings. If you don't have one of these treasure trove kits, there's a limited amount left. This is the September blue kit. Um, and you can just comment sold September and, um, you know, whoever gets there first will get kits in chronological order. Um, and then we are going to be selling a, an October kit that's purple and copper. And I'll be beating with that kit on October 25th. So you can bead with me again. Um, if you want a purple one, you just write sold October. Um, and they'll be available on the website too in, in uh, just probably a few hours. We were working on it this morning. Okay, so moving on to the earrings. Let me clean up my mess. Get all my beads cleaned up here. Oh, and there go the crimps, of course. This thing's stuck. Let's see. <clears throat> do, do, do. Clean up your mess. Do you guys dump beads all the time like I do? I'm sure you do. It's kind of a rite of passage when you bead. You have to dump beads every five minutes in order to exercise your patience. Thanks, Kristen. I think it's a cute way to use buttons too. I really like um, I really like using buttons, especially like old antique buttons. They can be really cool to incorporate into a design. I sometimes like to use them in the clasp, but there were enough of these that I thought, huh, I can incorporate it into the entire design, which is awesome. Okay, so next up we're gonna make these cute, fun, little dangly earrings using bugle beads and seed beads. So if you're not too familiar with seed bead lingo, bugle beads are the long tubes and seed beads are the round, little round guys. I think they're all considered seed beads as like a category um, of beads, but bugle beads are just a little bit different. Okay, so again, I am just going to, um, show you a little portion of this 
because it's not going to take much for you guys to figure out how to finish it. Um, but basically, these are all little soft flex dangles that are crimped. And so we'll make a couple of dangles and then I'll let you kind of um, do the rest on your own. Treva says, I have some cute buttons and now I have ideas for them. Awesome. Yeah, I'd love to see your ideas for what you guys do with buttons too. And again, if you made anything different than what I'm making today, I would love to see what you make now or what you make in the future. You can even come back and post it on this video. Um, and you know I always check all the comments. So I would love to see what you guys are making with these treasure trove kits. So like I said, I absolutely loved this finding from the minute I saw it. <laughs> and I knew I needed to use it for something. Um, so I'm really glad that it was able to make it into the very first treasure trove kit. Um, so all I've done is string my crimp tube, same two by two millimeter gold filled crimp tube, and onto the wire into the finding. And then I'm going to just pull it up you always want to make sure your finding can move around a little bit. You don't want it to be so snug um, that you don't get any dangle action. Like that's one of the nice things about earrings like this is they f these freely dangling pieces. Um, so don't pull it too tight. You want it a little loose. Straighten your wires out as best you can so that they're side by side inside the crimp tube. Not because it's going to hold better, but because you'll get a nice straight connection. And that's really important in a design like this um, where you've got, you know, a piece of wire hanging down. You want to get that nice and straight uh, in a connection. So same magical crimpers that we used before. Settle it right into the center to create your little square um, ravioli shape. And then we're going to turn it on its side and compress again. And Dawn's asking if it comes in silver. You know, I don't know if they do somewhere else. We got these in a warehouse closure. Um, they came in a box of just a bunch of odds and ends. And we're using all of the ones that we have here on hand in treasure trove kits that you can order from Softflex. Um, so they aren't an item that you can just find on our website. They're only available in the treasure trove kit and specifically in the September blue kit. Um, and then once they're sold out, I think we may have like two more pairs um, that didn't make it into a kit. And I'll probably swipe those for something um, to make something for myself. <laughs> If at all possible. Okay, so I'm going to trim off this extra wire. Um, but no, we don't have them in silver is the shorter answer. You don't want to cut so much because you don't want to waste a lot of wire. But you want to leave enough that once you do your beads, you can come back in pretty easily. And you'll kind of see what I mean once I get going. i got to get my beads out here. I just um, got cleaned up, but I didn't get my beads situated. So these strands of bugle beads, I don't believe they are tied off. They're just stowed in the bag here. So you'll want to consider that. Oh, she did tie them. Rosa's so sweet, isn't she? Rosa tied them for you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and untie in this case, uncut free my bugle beads. I don't need many. I'm just going to take a couple off. And then the same with the seed beads. I don't need many, so I'm just going to take a couple off. And I'm actually going to knot this again because I am a klutz. And if I leave these just loose, there's no doubt they're going to go flying all over this office. So I'm just going to tie those off so I don't have to deal with that. And I'm going to take out a couple of these blue beads as well. And let's cut that off. And then we just need to get a couple of those guys too. 
and I'll tie up this guy too. Oh, and see, that's what I'm talking about. I swear, if there's like a little tiny thread, I will undoubtedly, <laughs> undoubtedly lose it. Undoubtedly. It just is the way it is. Do you guys have that problem? Okay, here we go. Okay, so here we go. So <laughs> to make, I'm gonna do the center dangle first because it's the longest one. And I'm just gonna show you guys how to make basically one dangle because the rest of them are just like it. There's just a variation of how many um, beads are on each strand, but they're all the same thing basically. So this middle one has a bugle bead a seed bead, a bugle bead, and a seed bead, a bugle bead, and a seed bead. And then I'm going to string one of the uh, two by two millimeter gold filled crimp tubes onto the end of the wire. Now it can be hard to crimp on a single strand of soft flex with the magical crimpers. So what I do is I just go back in the end. And on these ones, I even strung it through the first seed bead just so I could get a nice, pretty good close fit um, with my pliers. So you can see there's still a little bit of looseness there. So what I'm gonna do is just pull this away and I'm gonna grab onto my crimp with my magical crimpers. And I'm not actually like compressing or anything. I'm just gonna pull, oh, I might do it like this. Pull it as close as I can without it being, you know, I want it to be snug. Oh, this is the way I pull, I pull from the loop. So I can get it as snugged up to those seed beads as possible. Because the crimping plier has like a little bit of a ridge on each side that goes around the crimp, there's still going to be a little bit of looseness, um, which is good, which is what I want. I want to have like, you know, I want it to be flowy, not rigid. But I don't want a bunch of wire showing either. So, And then I'm just going to go around and around it compressing that crimp tube, always in the center of your pliers. And there we go. Once we're done with that, we can go ahead and take the flat side of the cutters and trim the wire up next to the seed bead. And then we can take the flat side of the cutters and trim next to that crimp tube. And then you've got a really easy, beautiful, flowy dangle um, using the Softlex beading wire. So you're going to repeat this for all of the loops on the earring, um, but on the end, it's going to be a bugle and a seed, then the pattern twice, the pattern three times, twice, and then just once. Um, and these are so fun. I'll try to take a picture. Um, wearing them after because that you know jewelry always looks better when you can wear them <laughs> it's always hard when it's on sort of a flat surface because that's just not the way jewelry is meant to be seen um, but they're really fun and they feel really nice um, when you're wearing them too so again we do have a few of these blue September kits left where you can make earrings just like this and you would just comment sold September or you can go to our website www.softlexcompany.com um, to buy the blue kit look for treasure trove kits and then pick September the purple kit doesn't have these ear wires it has a whole bunch of other stuff and I'll be beating with that on October 25th um, we still have a necklace to make, so I'm going to start moving everything aside so we can move on to the last piece that I made um, from the treasure trove kit. So even though I made earrings, a bracelet, and a necklace, I still had all of these beads left 
in my first kit. So I had a, there's a lot of beads in here um, that can still be used for some other projects. Um, Tammy says the September treasure trove inspired me to use some beads and findings in my collection. I had made a bead aching to be a tassel top at a PMC certification class at Eclectica Beads in Milwaukee with, ooh, Irina, I love Irina. That's awesome. So I used the sapphire and chrysoprase beads with this month's treasure trove and the cute turtle charm for my necklace with soft flex and leather. I used some flex and similar beads for earrings and my bracelets, which is oversized to wear um, high on my forearm. That is so awesome, Tammy. I'm really excited to see what you made. I hope that you'll post pictures. I don't know if you can post them here on the live show. I don't think you can. Um, but if you can post pictures after the live show, I would love to see what you guys are making with these treasure trove kits. And I'm really glad to hear that you felt inspired by it. Okay, so I'm gonna move all this stuff out of the way. Oh, I need some of these actually for this next project, some more seed beads in it. We'll put those back, put those back. Okay, so I'm gonna move this out of the way. I definitely don't need the earrings. Um, I do need the magnetic clasp. If you guys have never seen a magnetic clasp, they are pretty awesome. Um, we don't normally carry them in our softlex stock, so I was pretty excited to see these in the treasure trove as well, and um, excited that I could offer these into the kit for you. Um, so, and they were, these were taken care of really well. They were wrapped in a paper, um, with a paper in between them, actually, which is great for the magnet clasps for long-term storage. Um, so they're in fantastic condition, too, which is good. So I'll stick that in there and get some more of this stuff out. Okay, so for this necklace, we're going to need some of those dark blue beads that we used in this original um, bracelet. We're also going to use some of these lighter blue sort of melony beads. I'm gonna put some of those out. And let me get some of the dark blue beads out too. And then some of the dark blue seed beads too. Okay, dokey. Okay, so for the very end, um, I didn't measure how much wire I used, which I really wish that I would have. Um, what I did was after making the bracelet and the earrings, I took everything that was left on the spool and pulled it off, and then I measured it into thirds, and it was plenty to make this necklace. Um, but that's not going to work since I didn't do all the other stuff here. So I'm going to guess... Um, at how long of a length I need, and we'll see how it goes here. I'm gonna guess this length would be good. You've gotta keep in mind you're gonna do some braiding, and then also you're gonna be crimping. Um, so you wanna have plenty of wire. Let me measure what I'm using so you guys all know if you're recreating this. I'm terrible about that. Um, I'm going to go with t probably about 22 inches, three strands of 22 inches. I'm going to snip, I'm going to pull, I'm just going to pull my whole spool thing off here because I know I'm going to use most of this wire. This is a 10 foot spool of soft flex beading wire. It also comes in 30 foot spools and 100 foot spools. There's longer lengths, but this is the perfect size for a kit um, where you're just making a couple of, of items like this. There we go. We're almost there. All right, so I've got my three long strands, 22 inch strands of beading wire. So I'll just kind of move that out of the way. Um, I'm going to move my necklace off to the side as well and my beads because I am going to use the macrame board again. It's just so handy 
Um, I'm going to do kind of a similar um, attachment style, um, but this time I've got three strands that I'm attaching, and then I'm attaching to a clasp. And so what you'll see I'm going to do is I'm going to take all three strands through a crimp, crimp it, and then I'm going to just cut off two of them and take one more strand through a crimp, attach it to the clasp, bring the wire back in and crimp it again. So um, we'll be... We will be attaching the clasp, but still have three strands coming out. So I'm just taking one two by two millimeter crimp from the kit, from the September kit, and um, stringing all three of my 22 inch strand wires through it. And I am going to use my magical crimping pliers again to just crimp those wires all together. <clears throat> Till it's tight, looks like a little bead. I'll go ahead and trim off two of those wires. So one of the trickiest parts of the magnet clasp is that it is attracted to metal because it's a magnet. Um, so it can be a little tricky sometimes um, working with soft wax or tools because it wants to grab onto just about everything. Um, so I just strung my second crimp tube. I'm going to go through my finding and then back into my tube. I didn't leave quite a bit of wire, I would normally leave more than that, especially if you're new to beading. You should probably leave a longer, like two inch strand. I was just being overly conservative. Um, but it can be difficult to get it through and I wouldn't want you to have to struggle with that. So you can see already this is pulling on to my pliers. I'm just going to anchor that down so I can get that nice uh, size that I want. And then oftentimes what I do when I'm working with a magnet clasp is I like to just give it something to, to hold on to so it's not bothering um, my crimping plier. So I am going to work way down here. I know that's kind of far away from you guys, but you've all seen me crimp about a million times. Well, that so very rarely happens to me that I lose a wireless connection, so I apologize for that. It looks like it kicked me off um, for a minute, and now we're going to get going again. So hopefully you guys will all jump back on here with me, um, and we can continue on the road with this necklace um, that I'm making from our... September treasure trove uh, kit. So sorry about that. You know Facebook, sometimes it just does that. Um, I've been so fortunate. It so very rarely has been a problem for me, but I know a lot of um, my fellow live video makers have that problem more often. Yay, I'm back. Hi, Lori. Hi, Kristen. Okay, so I'm just going to jump back in and hopefully people will keep... Um, joining us, rejoining us, and we'll just keep moving on like nothing happened, right? Okay, so I'm going to clip off this extra wire that's in between the two crimps. Um, oh, let's see. Stacy says, can you back up just a little? Well, the last thing I did was I took the one wire into the clasp and into the crimp and crimped it, and now I am going to trim off this extra wire here in between the two crimps. And again, it wants to always attach to whatever tool you're using, so I'm just gonna let it grab onto those chain nose pliers down here, save myself the trouble of fighting with it, and then I can trim off that extra wire. Um, so we've got a nice solid attachment there. And I've got three wires coming out on this end um, that I am going to braid. So to do the braiding, I like to use my macrame board. 
This is a um, mini macrame board. This is my favorite size. I don't really like the big giant one as much. Um, it's a little too clunky for me, um, but the mini is just like a perfect, perfect size for the types of things that I usually make. Um, so let's measure how long this braided section is here. So we know where we're going. It is about five and a quarter inch. Um, doesn't have to be perfect, but we know from here to probably about here, five and a quarter inch is going to be um, right about, wait, this is five inch right about here. So we're just going to do some quick braiding. Um, this is just like braiding hair. Um, but you're braiding soft flax. And if you aren't familiar with soft flax, it is a stainless steel uh, beading wire. So the center of this wire, this blue tanzanite wire that I'm using, is 49 strands of stainless steel. It is a uh, rust proof, marine quality stainless steel that can be worn in and out of fresh water or salt water. And then after it's braided into our proprietary braid on the inside of this wire, braiding the outside as well, but on the inside, um, once it's braided, it's coated in a premium nylon coating. And the color that you're looking at here is actually a dye that is put into that nylon coating. Um, so if you are familiar with other beading wires, there are lots of other options on the market, and the big difference between ours and the rest is just the types of materials that we use. We use really high quality stainless steel and nylon, and then also um, we have a proprietary braid that makes it very flexible and very strong. And it comes in lots of different colors. The tanzanite is the color that I chose for this September treasure trove kit. Um, but it also comes in amethyst and fluorite and red jasper and garnet and a lot of pretty, really pretty colors. So, in fact, I will give away a, an October treasure chest kit if you will tell me what your favorite color of soft flax is in the comments. Just comment with your favorite color, whether it's purple amethyst or garnet or pink tourmaline. And I will pick a winner in one week for a, an October treasure trove kit. We're almost there. What's your favorite color, guys? Okay, so five and a quarter is about there. I'm gonna take it off the board and get all, gather all three wires together in my hand so that I can string a crimp tube onto all of them. And then I'll just pull that crimp tube down the wires. I'm pinching this uh, end where it's braided because it comes unbraided pretty easily. Um, just like if you, you know, braid your hair, it just kind of comes undone really easily. Once you get that cinched down, though, it's nice and strong. You don't have to worry too much. Oh, I see a lot of tanzanites. Garnet. Garnet's a really pretty color. I actually have. This is a, this is garnet, if any of you guys haven't seen it. It's kind of a red, dark red, purple, beautiful color and soft flax. Um, it's one of the colors I chose to go on to JTV in November. So um, I was actually just doing all my planning, my planning meeting with the buyer for JTV today. So things are moving forward. I'm going to be on again in November on the, I think it's the 20th and 21st, if you guys want to watch on jewelry television. What size crimp tube did you just put on? It's again a two by two millimeter crimp tube. Um, and it's gold filled and it's the same crimp tubes that came in the treasure trove kit. There's 50 of them in the treasure trove kit. Okay, so I'm going to get my crimping pliers and I'm going to go ahead and crimp 
using the magical crimpers to hold all those wires together. Like so. Get up close so you can see. There we go. Welcome, Anna. Okay, so now I am going to add the beads. So to add the beads, I just freely strung them on. And again, I did a pattern um, that graduates as you get on to a further strand. So the top pattern is a seed bead, a melon, a dark blue bead, a melon, a seed bead a melon, a dark blue bead, a melon, a seed bead. So you can see I just repeated the pattern um, with three dark blue beads, four dark blue beads, and then five dark blue beads on the bottom strand. And they're graduated um, when you wear them as well. They lay, one's longer. The one with the most beads is the longest. So I'm gonna go ahead and start stringing some beads here. For this top pattern um, and it is a seed bead, a melon, a dark blue and you could totally throw in your own beads here guys. I tried to use only the beads that I had in the kit just in case some folks out there didn't have any additional beads. Um, so I could show that you're what you could make with just the kit alone. Um, but if you have some pretty gold heishi beads or want to add like a pretty pendant in the center of this, I think you could do some really cool stuff um, with these beads in addition to what I'm showing here. So I'm going to string another dark blue bead. And I'm just starting the pattern all over again. He, she, seed bead, he, she, dark blue bead. Or it's not a he, she, a melon is what I was calling it. I'm so scatterbrained. Okay, so I've got three, and then to finish it off, all I need is another melon and a seed bead. And I'm going to find a bead stopper to hold this side because I know myself. Bead stoppers are the best. They clip on the wire and hold the beads so you don't have to worry about them falling all over the place. Okay, so now I'm going to do the middle strand which is a seed bead, a melon, dark blue, melon, seed bead, melon, dark blue. And you can see the pattern. I mean, it's pretty, it's a pretty simple, simple, easy pattern. Um, to get. So I'm probably not going to string all of these beads, but I will show you how to connect the other side before I finish here so that you, if you've never done this before, you have a good grasp on what it is that you're doing here. And I'm doing four dark blue beads on the center wire in the pattern. I'm almost there. And just one more of these and a seed bead. Okay, so we're just going to pretend like I've done all three of these wires for the sake of time. And you're just going to take all three wires and again you'll string a two by two millimeter crimp tube and pull it down and once you get it down here you can start adjusting so just pull on the one with the most beads pull it down pull the middle one so it's centered and just keep adjusting until you feel like it's a good length for you um, 
and you can pull up here if you want to make the bottom tighter. You just pull on these guys and it'll tighten it up a little bit. You just keep adjusting until you have it just right. And when you feel good about it, that's when you're going to go ahead and crimp that tube in place on the wire. And then you'll braid up the back end, just like I did here braid up the back end, and then you use the same technique on the second side to attach those three wires to your magnet clasp. And then to take it on and off, you're just going to open and close it, and then you've got your handy dandy necklace. Um, so this is what I made with the September Treasure Trove kit. Um, I really enjoyed using all of these different parts and pieces to make this bracelet. And then I love, lo these are probably my favorite thing that I made. Um, but I'm so in love with this binding too. The earrings, which do not want to lay flat. They want to hang off someone's ear. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so if you don't have a treasure trove kit yet and you want to make any of these designs, we don't carry these parts and pieces in our normal stock. You need to buy one of these September treasure trove kits, and there are only a limited quantity of them. Um, so make sure if you want one, you buy one now. You can just comment, uh, sold September, um, or you can go to the website to buy that person kit because it is available um, on the website. I don't know if you guys saw, but I'm wearing my necklace that I made last week uh, with Beta Holly with that really beautiful crystal. And I have to say, I have not, I've gotten so many compliments today. Like even at the sandwich shop, um, the lady that normally just ignores me and checks me out <laughs> to just takes my money. She was like, what is that? Um, so yeah, I'm really ex still really excited about this guy here from Beta Holly, and it's definitely a piece that I'll be wearing on a pretty regular basis. Um, so thanks for joining me today to do the September Treasure Trove kit, and I look forward to doing the October Treasure Trove kit on October 25th. And again, that is a purple kit. I don't know where, it, oh, there it is, where it's gone in this mixture. It's purple wire, purple beads. It's got a, one of those really pretty square copper colored crystals in it and then some copper findings. So I'm not sure. Oh, and it has some black um, like silky cording in it too, which I'm kind of excited to use because it's not a normal thing that um, we have here at Soft Flex. So if you want one of those, you can either comment here, um, sold October, and I'll contact you after the show, and we'll, we'll work out um, payment and shipping. Or you can wait till it loads on the website later today, www.softlixcompany.com, and you can order it there as well. Um, and the same thing with the September kit. That's already available on the website right now, so you can always buy it there if you want. Um, and if you want to join me next week, is it next, is October next week? October 4th? Yeah, it is, isn't it? That's crazy. This, this fall has gone so fast. October 4th, I'll be doing a Softlex live design challenge with Jesse James beads with some of their new bead kits. And then on October 11th, I'll be doing another Softlex live sale. So uh, next week, I guess I'll be picking some new items to show you in the live sale. Um, oh, thanks. Maureen says she loves my earrings. I don't remember when I made these. These might actually even be my wedding earrings. I don't. It might be. I can't remember, but I do like them. I, they're nice and dangly, and they go just right with this guy. So thanks for, oh, what date for the Purple Live? Stacy? the Purple Live's October 25th. So that's going to be a fun show because there's a, 
totally different materials. There's still the pressed glass beads and the seed beads, um, but there's a lot of other types of materials in this bag that we'll be using. So the designs will be really different than what we did today, which will be fun and exciting. Um, and it'll be similar to this. I'll make something ahead of time and then we'll just kind of go through it so you can make it too. Um, but what I really look forward to seeing is pictures of what you guys have made with the treasure trove kits. So if you made something, please do post a picture um, so I can get a look at it and everybody else can too. It's fun to see how different minds work and different things that can come out of the same kit. So I'll see all of you guys next week. Thank you for joining me. And I'm sorry about the Wi-Fi breakup in the middle of the video, but it happens. All right. Talk to you all later. Bye, guys.